everybody. Um, welcome to my channel today. You're watching Fog and Fern. My name is Nancy and today is Fern Friday. It's Fern Friday number two. So I'm doing a little series based on the ferns that I have in my home that I've been growing and I'm going to try to do them on Fridays. I hope to do them every Friday until they're done. So, but we'll see. So, uh, but expect them, um, you know, once, once a week, hopefully on Fridays. So today, what do I have here? I have a kangaroo paw fern, but I guess before I get into the video, um, you know, I just recently <laughs> been chatting with some of you guys that follow my page, um, and my, my channel, my Facebook page, whatever. Um, and I've noticed that some of you guys, it's the sweetest thing. You, you have a cup of coffee or a warm beverage when you watch the videos. I absolutely love that because it's not very hard to know that I'm a Newfoundland woman. Um, we're all good at telling it, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> and women like to tell it over a cup of cup of, a cup of something, a mug up, as we say here, which is just a hot beverage of choice. And mine today, I wanted to have a cuppa with you as you're watching this video. Make it like real life, you know? Cause it is, but you know, like we can't really go sit in each other's homes right now. So um, anyway, I just thought that it would be really fun to do today. Um, this, what I, I'm drinking, I wanna know what you're drinking. Um, you know, maybe say the alcoholic beverages, you know, the stuff that's under the table for like after supper, <laughs> who am I to judge? So, um, this is what, what I'm drinking is a, um, Tulsi, holy basil, herb tea, herbal tea. This is like probably my favorite herbal tea that I drink. Uh, I've been drinking it for a couple years now. I've got a little packet here that I will show you. Um, but it's a beautiful tea, um, and holy basil has a lot of beautiful properties as a plant. If it's quite fitting that I drink a herbal tea, a plant tea, while I'm talking about plants, right? Um, anyway, check it out. Um, it's got some beautiful properties if you're into that kind of thing. I am, so... Don't be surprised if in the future you see me doing videos on plants like that, like native plants to our area and some, you know, just some videos on that kind of stuff. So don't be surprised. But here is the tea. Um, I get this at locally in called uh, the Natural Health Shop which is on Stavanger Drive in St. John's. I used to work there in the back office, not as part of the storefront staff, but um, I might as well say, I guess, uh, in my like daytime job and evening job, um, I run a private counseling practice. I'm a mental health counselor. And yeah, so I've, I've been in the field for approximately 15 years. It's unbelievable to even think that but yeah so that's what I do um that's my main job and um yeah I I just really really enjoy it love it so I used to work in the back of that shop pre-covid since covid I'm all online but I won't speak anymore about my my uh my practice but if anybody would be interested that's what I do for a living so further ado um i also kind of want to ask you how your spring was going uh the weather is warming up here in newfoundland we have a bit of a tough climate we are in growing zone 5b i believe um and so we're, you know we're on the cooler end obviously um and so yeah i just want to know if you had any indoor outdoor garden plans and if you're starting to do them yet uh, or taking the steps to work towards those goals, whether it's indoor, outdoor. Like, are you sourcing some like of your wish plants right now, if you can, uh, whether that be through clippings or buying full plants, purchasing them. Um, you know, if you're an outdoor gardener, are you doing any outdoor projects right now, getting anything started? 
um, I just would love to know. Just interact with me. I absolutely love it. It's just like the best thing to be talking to people about plants. Other than that, the best thing for me to be talking about is mental health because that's what I, my passion, my other passion. And uh, anyway, so yeah, just let me know. I would love to know. I've got some other uh, projects up my sleeve um, for this spring and I'm going to share them with you as soon as I can. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, like let's get to this this specimen of of a beautiful plant in in front of us here, like you know, like you know, Vogue. So <laughs> this is a kangaroo paw fern. Now, where did I get this beautiful plant? I got this plant locally from a pal of mine uh, who owns Green Thumb Houseplants. So his main shop is in Holyrood, which is actually just the neighboring town to where I live here, um, out, about an hour outside the city of St. John's. I live more rural. And so yeah, Holyrood's a town in um, Conception Bay South, which is a region of towns on the way to the city. So anyway, um, he gave this to me. We had a lovely chat, <laughs> as we usually do. And... Um, and a good distance apart because, of course, COVID was going on then. It's a little dusty, Jay. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, he told me this. I would be fine with this fern, he said, because it's a hardy fern. And he was right. So let's get into about this fern. It is a hardy fern. Um, as you can tell, it has a pretty glossy, leathery fronds. They're like little kangaroo paw ferns. This plant, if you're wondering, is native to Australia. Live long and prosper, hey? Well, live long and prosper. So, um, yeah, and it's it's a um, pretty tough fern in my experience. I'll just speak about, you know, some key features. I'll go over the care and the conditions that I have that I'm growing this fern in. And I'll also, I like to speak about design because like design matters to me. I really like that stuff and I like designing with plants. So I'll kind of speak to that at the end of the video. So anyhow, this plant. Okay, so we talked about how it's a hardy plant. Um, it has these wiry stems. Now, I don't know if you can see, because this is a really cool feature of this plant that I'd like to talk to you about. It really makes it stand out. You see these things? I'll just kind of come forward a little bit. Look at that. They're really cool. Um, they're really tough and hairy. They're kind of hairy. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, they're really cool. Look at this one. Look at that one. Right? How cool is this? And if you look in the plant there, you can see that's where they all kind of come from, right? Um, so, hey, and then you creep over the pot. Like, how sweet is that? Can see that one is creeping over the pot. So they are stems. So when you hear the word stem, you're going to think node, which is a natural join in a stem where leaves will come out. So there's a node, right? And yeah, so they all they all come out the leaves, the fronds, of course, in in the terms of fern come out of these stems, these hairy, wiry-like stems. Now, they grow under the soil. So what does that tell you? Well, this is what it tells you. This plant is a, is a rhyme zone plant. What's a rhyme zone? Okay, so a rhyme zone, I need this sip. Mm. <sighs> Chef's kiss. Put my tea over here, I'll probably knock it over. I hope not, anyway. Um, a rhyme zone is a root ball system. Uh, rhizomes grow underground. They grow horizontally and they store energy and water for the plant. Um, when you have a rhizome plant, it's usually a tough plant. In nature, like in Australia, I guess this, well, yes, it does. It grows outside in Australia. Um, and so this plant would be in the ground. Its rhizomes would be growing underneath the ground spreading. They spread, anything that's rhyme zone like spreads underground, can be considered an invasive species in somebody's garden. Of course, it wouldn't grow in our ground here, not that I don't think. 
um, but comparable to um, a rhizome plant that spreads horizontally over time through the ground would be lily of the valley, for example. Um, a lot of people will consider that sort of an invasive plant you need to kind of control in your garden outside, but it's hardy enough uh, and will survive in cold temperatures uh, to spread and come back perennially um, every year in your garden. So this is what happens to this plant, but indoors for us, of course, here in our climate. So yeah, that's that's kind of what a rhyme zone does. So, um, oh, let me see. Yeah, yeah. I have a, little, a couple of notes there. I didn't miss anything. <laughs> so this plant, another feature is that it's epiphytic, meaning it can grow on a tree in nature. It's what it would do, right? It would grow on a tree. It could grow on a log. It could grow in a crack in between rocks. So like just really cool, just like those staghorn ferns, right? Which I will cover in another fern video because I do have several staghorn ferns in my home, love them. So anyway, I'll get into them later, but yeah, so it's epiphytic. I just think that's the most coolest thing. They have like the symbiotic relationship with the trees and it provides, and it, what I mean by that is that this plant will provide something to the tree, the tree provides something to the fern. And it's just unbelievable. Nature works in such harmony and we could really take a lot of cues from nature, hey? Like, um, just to live in harmony and uh, give to one another, reciprocate, right? That's kind of the best way to work, the best way to live, the best way to be, right? Anyway, I'm getting off topic. So if you wanted to then propagate this beautiful plant, um, what you would do is you would divide. Like this is the way you propagate most ferns. Um, other ways to propagate ferns, of course, is through the spores that grow on the bottom of the ferns. Now, I don't know if this plant does this, it might because it's a fern and you know, they're all in the same family. They all might share that feature, but I am not that kind of expert on ferns. Um, I haven't come across any information on this plant that says it can propagate by spores. So I'm not sure if you know, please let me know. I'd love to know. Um, yeah, so, but you divide this plant. Now, when you're dividing anything that has a rhyme zone, take, for example, a ZZ plant, which I did in another video previously in, uh, on my channel, one of my earlier videos, um, you would take the plant out of the pot, separate it. I'm not going to do this here because I don't want to disturb this plant, but, um, you're going to see those potato-y looking rhyme zones looking things, and you just would separate them. Now, if they're all connected, which they should be, unless you've got newly uh, planted plugs of the fern, uh, they should be connected, right? So you take a very sharp sterile knife and you chop the stem. Don't damage the the rhyme zone itself. You stop. You chop the stem that you know adjoins the rhyme zones, and yeah, from there you want to include um, several rhyme zones. It just does better. Um, Chinese evergreens, the aguamenias. Uh, I don't know if I said that right. Me, <laughs> I don't care. So, <laughs> not to disrespect the plant, but I don't. I honestly am so beyond that now. I don't care what I sound like. Wow. So, um, but those types of plants, for example, they're also rhyme zone plants, right? So. You, if anybody has tried to propagate those before, I've done this, I've made this error, and this is how I know, um, is that like I've tried to separate them and have like one rhyme zone, right? And it doesn't work out. So I can have more plants or whatever, it doesn't work out. They need more than one rhyme zone, typically. Um, don't know why, that's the intelligence of plants. Maybe there's a scientific reason behind that, and I just don't know, it's probably not. So cool, but I don't need to know. All I need to know is that, and maybe what you need to know, unless you're really into that stuff, go ahead. Um, is to put a few rhyme zones together, several. So that's how you would propagate that plant. Pretty cool. I'm not interested in propagating this plant. I want it to go big, healthy. Right now it's in an eight inch pot. So, um, yeah, I think I did a pot this once. 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's growing. It's it's the full of this pot. But you know, uh, it, I'm waiting until the roots grow at the bottom. Currently, there are no roots growing at the bottom of this plant. But I want to show you this too. Just look at this. This is the frond. Anybody who's in ferns would know <laughs> that when a new frond comes out on a fern, it is the sweetest looking little thing. Look at that. I can't get nothing to focus because I'm just not always the best with a camera. And this is only my iPhone. So, one of these days I'll actually use my good camera. So anyway, yeah. And that's, you know, about this fern. So, conditions. What do I grow this plant in? Well, a lot of you guys, if you watched my last video of my indoor bath oasis, looking over the ocean it was a little extra but you know whatever i like being extra <laughs> um you will see or you may have heard me say that the conditions that i keep these plants in so this plant gets bright indirect light sometimes it gets afternoon light direct afternoon light coming from the west of course um, and week south. So week, week afternoon sun, it only lasts for about an hour or two, maybe an hour. And I find that sometimes if my plant is not hydrated good enough, it might burn the crisps, burn the ends, ends of the, of the frond. I'm not that concerned. Like it, you know, it hasn't happened very often. It's usually, if it happens, it's because I haven't really kept up on the watering of this plant, um, which I'll talk about in a second. So, you know, it can take, what I'm trying to say is that it can take a little bit of direct light in my experience, in my bathroom, given my conditions of humidity and such, it can take that. If you want to try that, go ahead. It's it, everything to me, the best learning that I've had is by trial and error. Don't be afraid to try. So this is a hardy fern um, that can take that kind of light. I think a lot of it, it has to do with its thick, thick leaves. They can hold more moisture. Thicker leaves hold more moisture, right? Um, opposite to maidenhair. Very dainty, feathery like fronds. They don't, they don't hold that moisture. So they need to be so consistently moist. You can't really miss much time with those plants. I find this one, I can miss a day or two, maybe even a few days. But I'm going to pay for it a little bit, but it's usually not that bad. Um, yeah, and then again, my bathroom is quite humid, so that helps me a lot. So anyway, you know that I keep it in um, relative high humidity. I do not know the humidity levels of my bathroom or any place in my house because I don't have a humidity gauge. I am going to get one so I can tell you this information and I can know myself, which would just benefit everybody. So I'll do that one time soon. <laughs> I'm going to order one or get one somewhere and maybe I'll get one this weekend. But anyway, um... Yeah, and so that's the humidity in the lighting. So with the watering, as I mentioned, and I will mention with, with ferns, consistent moisture is so key. If you're a person that kind of like forgets to water your plants, you're gonna pay for it with a fern. Um, but you know, don't be hard on yourself because if your house is very low in humidity, if you use a lot of heat, like electric heat, or wood stove, stuff like that, of course, it's going to dry your plants out more, right? So, yeah, um, your house can really um, make or break some of your plants, but you can always amend certain things to keep your uh, house more humid. So, again, you can put your plants like ferns that need a lot of humidity, calatheas, the like, you can put them in your bathroom, which would give you more humidity. Anyone's bathroom would because it has water and you're using it. Um, hopefully there's a window. Um, if not, you can put a grow light um, or you can have your fern in the kitchen. That's another way to get it, give it humidity. You can also put your ferns on a pebble tray. So a tray of water, plastic tray of water, any kind of tray. Um, you put stones, river stones, gravel, whatever kind of decorative stones you might get. Or you can get stones up by the door, beach stones, whatever. Put your water in the tray, but do not allow the water to touch the plant because it will give it root rot. All that water will be consistent, present, consistently present for the plant, and that will give it root rot over time. So, but that's the general idea about how you can increase humidity through a pebble tray. I don't usually do that, but 
I try to do other things before I do that because I just want more like low maintenance <laughs> because I have a lot of plans and I have babies and I work and I volunteer and I have a go gun. So I just got a lot of stuff on the go and I don't want to be maintaining that kind of stuff. So, but that's another way you can increase your humidity. You don't ever want your ferns to be in soggy soil or any of your plants to be honest, right? So it's up to you to learn what the difference between moist and soggy is. I always say, if you, you can compare it to a cloth and you go wring your cloth out and there's water like blowing out of your cloth, that's soggy, that's soggy. Um, moist is you can put your finger in the soil, some soil comes out on your, on your fingers, right? If it's wet, it's soggy, the, the, the soil is just not gonna stick to your finger, it's gonna slide off. If it's dry, you won't get any so it'll stick to your fingers. So sticking to your finger is inconsistently moist. This one I just watered there a couple of nights ago. Look at this, I stick my finger in there. See that? It's got soil. So that will tell you that it's still moist, not soggy, not dry, okay? So finally, design. Why I love this fern so much is that it gives such interesting texture to your plantscapes, wherever your plantscapes are. It can, it can be a standalone plant, like sort of like a feature plant because it's so sculptural looking, right? Look at that, it's just like coming down underneath it. It's just so grand, I love it. So it could be like a sculptural piece all in of its own. Um, or, you know, you could put it amongst other ferns like I did out in my bathroom. And, I'll be sure to insert pictures and videos through through this video here, but um, you can see that I have it uh, next to my Boston fern, which is next to my maidenhair fern. And those have really cool textures themselves, right? And so I kind of like the Boston fern in the middle because it's, you know, your more standard looking kind of fern, like fronds. And this is very different, very unique. And then the maidenhair is also very dainty and unique. And so you've got two of these unique plants, like with fronds, flanking a, a uh, kind of common looking fern frond, if you will. So I just think that that's really stunning. And I love the visual interest. I like, I like kind of unique looking plants. They make your eyes bounce off them and, and be interested and you're sizing them up and you're just like kind of looking at them. Hey, you're cool, you're really interesting, right? So yeah, I like different, I really do. So anyhow, this is the kangaroo paw fern. Um, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Uh, please give me a like for this video. The more likes I get, the more I like it, <laughs> and the more I know um, what kind of content you're enjoying so I can continue to make that content. Um, so I wanna just be in constant communication and collaborating this channel with you and gleaning ideas from you, giving you ideas and really bouncing back and forth from each other. So your comments are totally welcome. I would love to just continue to receive them and chat with you. Um, and you know, subscriptions, of course, like I want to see this channel grow. It's growing. <laughs> I love it. I think about 60 subscribers now. That's awesome. I can't believe it, right? It's pretty cool. But anyway, um, yeah. Um, so subscri subscribing is free and you'll always catch my videos that way too. And I don't get lost in the abyss of your YouTube life, you know? So, cause there's a lot out there. So, uh, yeah, likes, comments, subscriptions, please. I really appreciate the people who do comment and have subscribed and like my videos. You're all really sweet. I really appreciate it. I really enjoy talking to you. Um, you know, I, I get some messages sometimes with, with my face, like in my video up on your big TV screen and it just like melts my heart because I do truly feel like I'm in your home and keeping each other company at this really strange time in our lives when we have to be innovative around connecting. We all know how important connecting is and we all kind of know how therapeutic, at least us plant people, right? We all know how therapeutic playing with your plants are, acquiring plants. Um, and, you know, caring for them at the end of the day, you know, 
just really paying attention fully to your opponents and uh, engaging with somebody else who's really connected and uh, to, to their plants and passionate about that really boosts your brain, really boosts those endorphins, those painkillers, the, the dopamine, the happiness, the, all those neurotransmitters. Um, got all mental healthy on you. So it, it's just good for your mental well-being. In balance, of course, in moderation, you know, we all can get a bit excessive with our plants sometimes, I myself included. But, uh, you know, yeah, so at a balance that's right for you, a life of plants is, it, you know, brings us wholeness and wellness and certainly communicating with people does. So I'm going to stop that spiel, but, you know, I just hope me being you know, bring myself a little bit more into these videos um, and sort of uh, speaking about plants from the standpoint of wellness sometimes uh, was beneficial for everybody because it certainly is for me. It, it just is such a passion. Passions collide. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, have a great weekend. Enjoy the sort of sun we're having here in Newfoundland. I hope it sticks around. And I will be seeing you soon, hopefully in my next video. Thanks a lot, guys.